Hello, Dr. Vicki Peterson here. You've um, probably heard me speak before about intestinal biopsies and how um, I'm not necessarily a complete fan of them. And um, many people mention that it is the gold standard and truly the only way to diagnose celiac disease. And for a long time, I felt that that wasn't necessarily so. And a recent paper came out in uh, BMC Gastroenterology and uh, just 2013, so this year. Uh, the title of this published article was Intestinal Biopsy is Not Always Required to Diagnose Celiac Disease. So it, you, you kind of see where it's going. Um, but uh, I, I like this because the biopsy is certainly an invasive procedure. It's not necessarily as uh, sensitive as we would like. Uh, often a great deal of damage has to occur in someone's small intestine before uh, a biopsy shows positive. I've always been very concerned with a patient who has positive blood tests only to have a negative biopsy and, and be told that they're fine and just to monitor them. And when you think about the importance of the small intestine to just let it get worse and worse and, and then have a po positive biopsy, goodness knows how many years later, what's happening to that person's health. It's really increasing their risk of other disease, in my opinion. Uh, research supports this as well. So um, I wanted to share with you the results of this study. And what they did, the researchers uh, took several different blood tests. So. Um, they looked at the deamidated gliadin blood test, uh, both for IgG and IgA. So these are looking at immunoglobulins of the immune system. And looking at the G portion and the A portion is a good idea because many times someone with celiac disease uh, is deficient in the A. So all that means is that their immune system has been taking a lot of abuse, especially, of course, with celiac in there, in, in the mucosa of the intestine. And so this IgA portion is so depressed that when you do a test measuring it, you're going to get a false negative because they just don't have enough representation of that particular immunoglobulin. So in this test, they looked at the, the G portion and the A portion, both for the deamidated gliadin. So that's what occurs to the protein gliadin in celiacs as it's creating the damage to the small intestine. They also looked at anti-gliadin antibodies. And this is a test, once again, both for the G and the A. Um, that particular test, the latter one, is um, not exclusive to celiac disease. We use that one for gluten sensitivity as well. So it's really just showing that your immune system is reacting to that protein gliadin and not necessarily that you have the hallmark destruction uh, to the small intestine seen, seen with the classic celiac disease. Um, they also uh, measured the TTG test and the uh, endomycial antibody known as the EMA test. So four different blood tests were were analyzed in these individuals, and they and they found that when um, all four were positive, the predictive value for celiac disease was at 99 and 100 percent, making the need for a biopsy just unnecessary. Even when they took out the EMA test, which is not considered necessarily as reliable as the others, they really didn't see any difference. The predictive value was still at 98, 99 percent, so very, very high. So. If you're in the position where you're not very keen on the intestinal biopsy, or, or maybe you've had a positive blood test and your biopsy was negative, you could, if, well, if you're still eating gluten, that is, you can, you can do further blood tests and use this particular reference uh, as an indicator to your um, clinician of why that would be enough information to, to give you a positive diagnosis. So. Uh, Anyway, I always want to keep you on the, on the cutting edge of what's happening in research, and I found this paper very interesting. So I hope it was informative for you, and if you have any questions of me, please do contact me. I love to hear from you. And until next time, I wish you very good health.